third time's the charm? Maybe? Yeah, in our Discord thing, Jordan posted a whole uh, thing in the streaming tab about what he thought the best setup for OBS was. So I thought I'd try to take his advice, but it's fucked up everything, so... Yeah. Setting it back to the way it was fixed to fix things. It's a lot, a lot better now. Uh, what was it? I was just fiddling with... He said to set the like the streaming profile to high and have it uh something else. Oh, downscale filter lens zos or something like that. But that's like that totally fucked up everything. No, I already have it set to 6,000. No, just... Everything's fine now. <laughs> so you're asking who my team is? It's uh, Starkey and Grobick. One second. Yeah. All right, and into Terror Tower we go. Hang on a second, my dog waited until I started streaming to decide that he wanted to go outside.
Sorry about that. Okay. The Ochar lands have dried up and withered. Is it your will to choose destruction? Whoop! Terror Rator. And we have to ruin that all yellow thing you got going on. <laughs> you make jokes groping backwards is mark you make jokes about that but uh it sadly took me a lot longer than it should have to realize why his name is grobic because that's the word cyborg backwards Did you do that to poor Starkey? You bastard. Can I turn the game up? Yeah, I can turn it up a little bit. The music at this point is just really low anyways. I guess that was it. <laughs> Sergey just came back to life and murdered it. this place and fight weird uh, amoeba spearmen actually oh he's already almost dead never mind I want to show you Grobix ultimate <laughs> really neat Oh yeah, <laughs> I put I put three power seals on Grobic to <laughs> increase his attack power. 
a ridiculous amount. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't want to go down here just yet. Yeah, that's what I want. No strum. Yeah. I was running around the future lab and some of the enemies there started dropping power seals. And I'm like, you know what? Let's just keep putting them on Grovic. Okay. Ah, son of a bitch. These enemies are too weak. Grovic won't get off his, uh ultimate on them. It's been quite a while since I've been at the end of this game. <laughs> Excuse me, Amoeba Men. I, I need to keep going. I don't think any of these doors are open. from the heavens! Bing! I got a random piece of scrap paper in front of me and a pen. So I know before the end of this I need to write down a color code. But not yet. Why walk down there when we can take the fun way? Or wait, oh, I guess I could have just walked through the water. Oh, there's treasure on that side. can't fucking ignore that. <laughs> this close to the end of the game. Nostrum. Oh. Wait. Gotta fight one of these guys no matter what.
so I was playing this yesterday and I'd forgotten how completely wacky this story gets towards the end. Uh, so, apparently, they took the remnants of the evil mother computer from the future in Chrono Trigger, and they decided to keep using it and upgraded it, and it became a computer system called Fate, that, I guess, created an entire... I don't know why they decided to keep using it. But, uh, I guess it basically created an artificial archipelago in the past in order to seal away the dragon gods somehow. Wasn't too clear on how it did that. And then it basically... They, it wiped the memories of, like, a bunch of the research staff and then let them live on the island as, like, islanders or on the islands as islanders and then use the actual save points the records of fate to manipulate and control them so that they would never leave the islands and go to the mainland yeah yeah, that is a little bit terrifying. Want that? Just give me it. That thing's gonna fall if I step on it, isn't it? Give me. Search. Search. You finally made it this far, Surge. Ah, it's the creepy stone face above us, Starkey. Also, since the Surge is a mute protagonist, uh, Starkey tends to have his conversations for him. I've noticed. Are you human? When I was still human, I was locked up here and have been here ever since. This tower is a fortress belonging to the ancient Reptites, a symbol of the revenge brought against mankind by the dragons. With the defeat of fate, the seal has been broken and this tower has resurfaced. In the eyes of the dragons, we humans are the foes. A brain that has... The face is what your cat see when you go looking for them under the bread. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> Hopefully I can see that. <laughs> a brain that has developed abnormally to three times the original size in the span of the three million years. We humans have evolved at an enormous rate because of our contact with Lavos' flame. In a sense, mankind is Lavos' offspring. We humans are extraneous to this planet. Now, how will you fight, Serge? With... with my weapon? Dumb face, that's a redundant question.
Also, uh, my team is well balanced color wise because we have Surge, who's white element, as well as Starkey, who, on the other hand, is white element, and then we have Grobic, who's black element. Perfectly balanced team. Need all white characters. <laughs> that might be say something something racism. <laughs> no no no. Just as it so happens, seems like most of the characters I like are either white or black element. For the most part. There's a few exceptions. Like, I came to really, really like, uh... Just put Kid in your party and her dead body just plop her on the ground. Uh, but her dead buddy, she does her. Even when she dies, her body doesn't remain. It disappears and she respawns later without any memory of how she died. She says so herself. Like, right after you defeat fate, uh. The frozen flame does something to her, and she basically, like, gets sick, and then dies, and then she just kind of shows back up again and tells you, Ah, hey, yeah, yeah, sometimes I just, I, I just die, then I'm just, come back to life. I have no idea how I died, though. <laughs> In fact, I literally think that's something that happens if you uh, choose not to save her when she gets poisoned early on. Is that everybody cries about it? Korcha gets butt hurt and won't you let you use his uh, boat? And then after a little while, they're just like, "Oh, she's okay again." I don't remember. I think I've only ever gone that route once. I don't blame you for not remembering that, because, like, the second disc of this game just starts dropping a whole bunch of crazy shit on you. That you're just supposed to kind of accept. remember it having to do a bunch of stuff you didn't want to for Glenn. But he was rad as shit. See, my problem is is that in a game where you can recruit dragons, cyborgs, living voodoo dolls, spacemen and stuff, the human characters just seem boring to me. <laughs>
Like, I mean, and I've used some of the human characters, and they're all right. I mean, none of them call in a giant uh, robot from space like Starkey. None of them do the shit that Grobik does, like turn his hair into a laser sword. Also, Grobik's tanky as all shit, which I really appreciate. Okay. So... Check this shit out. Uh, yeah, we'll shoot the owl. Let's fuck him. Eh. The fucking proton railgun arm. Uh, it lived. This is dumping angel charms on me. But what I really needed is a uh, what I really need is a demon charm. <laughs> that way I can make one more piece of rainbow equipment before we get to the end here. Yeah, you remember in Chrono Trigger how the rainbow shell was just this one big lost mythical treasure? You could only make a few things out of it because it was so rare and hard to find. And then you play Chrono Cross and there's fucking rainbow shells everywhere! <laughs> Chrono and them should have just uh, hopped a ride on down to the fucking El Nido archipelago. They could have had all the rainbow equipment they could ever want. Oh, that was stupid of me. The hell? Oh yeah, here's hair cutter. Oh, hey scarecrow. I would say happy new years, but that was about eight hours ago for you. <laughs> or like nine or so hours. For me it was only just about an hour and a half ago. Well, at any rate, Happy New Year's, man. <laughs> Hope your New Year's already going better than the last one. I'm trying to start off the new year by finishing up one of my <laughs> one of my projects. I'm gonna try to finish up Chrono Cross tonight. Oh, 
What are those things? I suppose we should find at least one of them. Figure out what the hell these things are. Q points, huh? Freefall. Near the end. Yes, I am in the final dungeon. I have done pretty much everything else I need to. So I'm going to be I'll be getting the best ending in the game. Okay, so it's red orb, means that's the right way, but there's treasure over here. So I believe I already defeated yellow, so there's five other colored sentinels to defeat, being red, blue, green, yellow, white, and black. Many have bled and suffered and perished. It is your turn to die. Alright. Hi, orator. He's a super armored centaur guy. Sadness wave. No, why do they hate Starkey so much? They knew who the real threat is. They're like, that's that guy what finished off the white dragon earlier. And defeated that evil fucking super powered police robot. Tablet, really? Oh, okay. I know part of the reason you're doing that is so you can get a red field, but I'm not gonna let you keep that. He's already almost dead. Omega Red. Yeah. The yellow one did this exact same thing. Where it fucking laid the smack down on Starkey. And then, uh... Fucking did its Omega attack on him. It's 
mean, you assholes need to leave Starkey alone. Be done. All right, two down, four to go, and then you know the main boss. Yeah. Magus is the boss, yeah. No. No, Magus isn't the boss. You mean Lavos. Yeah, it's kind of like a... Come on, get the fuck off the ladder. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like a little Lavos shard is the very final boss. But Magus is sort of is and isn't in this game. Because they leave little hints and stuff that he's around. But then they don't actually, like, actually have him in there. He went nuts and turned into a magician of pain. Yeah, he's supposed to be Guile. In fact, I basically headcanon that he still headcanon that he is. But the game, uh... They took out most of the references to that because they didn't want him... To, they decided they didn't want it to be that. But they didn't take out, like, all of them. His kid reads a letter from uh, Luca, who tells her that mm, maybe Guile is there right with you right now. And I forget if uh, Guile has anything to say if he's there. I usually had him with me, but this time I had Grobic, and I was like, "Fuck." But considering how this game ends, at least in the best ending, it would have meant everything if Guile was actually Magus. But instead, he's just some really awesome wizard, man.
<laughs> and I love those juicy crits. then. Give him the rocket punch. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give Spectral glove. Ooh. Right. Rainbow equipment. Come on, Grobic. Take it! Take it! Gain even more attack power that you didn't already need. He does need all of the attack power. You're right, I was mistaken. If I find any way to give him uh, more power rather than just uh, so anything better than power seals, I will be sure to equip it to him. Interesting. I guess I should have figured that out because that one did use red elements. down the Rubit. Lasers! Laser light show. They didn't appreciate my laser light show. This is silly. Oh, it's super silly. I mean, it's 
uh, dimension hopping melodrama mixed with a nice bowl of utter silliness. Would this be Viper Manor? What's going on? Oh, hey, ghost children that make people mad. <clears throat> hey, Balthazar. Welcome, it's good to see you finally made it here. Been expecting you, Serge. Where are we? Is this Viper Manor? Merle. <laughs> Prongo, Lucky, and Merle, yeah. Space that does not exist. But don't mind that. More importantly, I have something I must explain to you. Who are you? Oh, my name is Balthazar. Sorry, we were only supposed to learn now that he was Balthazar. Whoops. These kids suffer PTSD. Well, I mean, they're also dead. <laughs> and I took their souls. In the ancient magical kingdom of Zeal, I was known as the Sage of Reason. Well, that was up until the Queen of Zeal attempted to harness the power of Lavos. Let's just say things got uh, out of control and Lavos created a dimensional vortex that threw me far into the future. There, I seized the opportunity to study the science of the future. I was then able to apply that knowledge I brought from my own era, including magic which was long lost in the future. Anyway, this led me to make huge progress in the research of time. Well, that research led to the creation of Chronopolis, and to the time crash. You might think I really blew it, but perhaps it was really my finest hour. Ho ho ho! I created a singularity that killed everyone. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm old. Anyway, I created a compact time machine that I dubbed the Neo Epoch. I used it to time warp to this age to learn of Chronopolis and Fate's plans, and to see how things were turning out. Terra Tower is really a city of the Reptites from another dimension's future. Bethazar kept fucking with the timeline. Yeah, apparently. It was originally Dinopolis. The castle of Azala's descendants, who achieved an evolution much more intimate with our planet. It's a stupid ass Chrono Cross is the thing. Dinopolis was drawn into this dimension's past about 10,000 years ago. This was done so that it would serve as a counterbalance against Chronopolis, which Lavos pulled here. So Lavos pulled Chronopolis and the crazy evil mother computer here. But then the dragon gods pulled a city of lizard men far into the future to combat them. And so now we have a picture of a bunch of fighter jets attacking a weird dragon palace thing. In the end, Chronopolis emerged as the victor and the Reptite's fortress was sealed away by fate. Because, you know, you might be a super smart lizard with uh, ridiculous brute strength. But I'm packing a looks like stealth fighters, probably like prototype supersonic jets, fucking like top of the line, ah, uh, 
city block destroying tomahawk missiles. More important now is the role of the dragons play in all this. Originally, the whole archipelago of El Nido was known as the Sea of Eden. This was because it was where the dragon gods resided. But then fate sealed away the dragon. The dragon god's powers, in effect becoming a god itself. Thus, the island where the new god had fate existed came to be called the Sea of Eden instead. Perhaps you didn't realize it, but you were used by the Dragon Gods to eliminate fate. No shit? <laughs> it was not true that the Dragon Gods were sealed away. The frozen flame. Pretty sure he meant to say sealed away by the frozen flame. Oh no, never mind. It's not true that the Dragon God sealed away the Frozen Flame. Okay. Rather, it's quite the opposite. It was fate that used the power of the flame to seal up the Dragon Gods. In reality, the Dragon Gods are in opposition to man, while fate itself was actually the protector of humanity. See, that's giving fate a bit too much credit. Because fate itself was like basically a tyrannical overlord who was manipulating and enslaving people. All for the sake of science. The dragon gods were originally a singular plasma life form, a living accumulation of the planet's energy. Originally, it was a biological machine used to control the powers of nature in the future, and the future society of the Reptites. In order to control the natural energy itself, fate divided the one dragon and god entity into six weaker plasma life forms, then scattered them across the land and sealed them away. Their dragon-like appearances are just pseudo guises. Temporary forms they take so that they can appear in this dimension. But all that was changed when fate was vanquished and its power hold was eliminated. At that moment, the seven dragons who had been rendered almost powerless and forgotten. Oh, did I forget to mention? Yeah, there's a seventh dragon. <laughs> Traveled across the dimensions to reunite into a single entity. Seven dragons? Saki thought there was only six. There were six dragons you know of, and one more hidden dragon you didn't. Sorry, when I said there was originally six dragons, I basically lied to your face. Balthazar is a dragon, and now you stab him in the ass? No, Balthazar isn't the dragon. It was the clown woman, Harley. Harl. Like the second moon that once was lost, but later was found. Although the same planet, my world didn't have two moons. Look up at the night sky now and you will see seven celestial bodies, five stars and two moons. Five brother stars that correspond to the five colored dragons, ruling like gods over the night sky. One moon that corresponds to the white sky dragon. Yeah. Starkey, ba Starkey has my conversations for me. He knows that I don't talk. So Starkey just assumes the role of the main character at times like this. And another darker daughter moon to counterbalance them. The fire dragon, the water dragon, the green dragon. <laughs> who wields the powerful element of green. The Earth Dragon, the Black Dragon, and the Sky Dragon. The Salsa Dragon. And one more, the final dragon, the Dark Moon Dragon, 
the one who was to work to free the other dragons from their bondage by the fake computer. The green dragon kind of got boned in the series of whatever it controls. Yeah, but... The green dragon was kind of an asshat anyways. He's like... The most goblin-esque looking of them. And when I fought him, basically all he did was breathe bad breath on me the entire time. Yes. Because the yellow dragon's the earth dragon. So the green dragon just controls green. <laughs> I, I don't know. The child the others created on the night of the electric storm that temporarily caused fate to loosen its hold on them. I believe you knew her as Harley. Unbelievable. Oh, that's right. You know what? Starkey's also the literally the only character. Watch out for the leaf dragon. <laughs> Starkey's also literally the only character that had a meaningful meaningful conversation with Harl Harl at all. The dragon gods were the essence of nature on this planet. Perhaps we can consider what's happening as our planet's vengeance on us to finally sweep away the unwanted humans from the face of this blue planet. First it was fate, now it's the planet? Or vice versa, and the licorice dragon? Yeah, mmm, the delicious licorice dragon. <laughs> the 2021 dragon. But either way you look at it, now's the time to set things right. The future of mankind, the destiny of this planet, everything depends on the next battle you fight. But unfortunately, the time has come for us to part. Hey mister, is that the Chrono Cross you guys have there? The Chrono Cross, the melody and harmony. It is the power to cross space and time and unify people's thoughts and feelings. It has the power to transfer memories. By using it as an element, it has the power to draw on the sounds of the six colored elements to produce a healing harmony. It has the power to combine the sounds of the world into one melody. I'm sure we'll meet again soon in one time period or another. Be careful now and good luck. I have to spend my time here being haunted by ghost children. Also, I am a ghost. We found black hole. Uh, yeah, you know what? Now would be a good time to auto allocate. Just don't care all that much about. Having like no strum in there. Anything else really good? For now? Yeah. Cut. No. Okay, good. Good to go. Now I think we cross back across the bridge and we'll be in some a different place.
Oh, a different door has materialized. This room does have the crystals in it, but they're not glowing the correct way. They are playing the right melody, though. I don't think this is... There, There's another... I believe there's another room with the... Uh, with the colored crystals that... Here it's just playing the melody with the crystals, but none of them are really lighting up. Well, they kind of are, but not in a very noticeable way. There's another room further on where they do it. But I know what you're talking about. I've beaten this game several times. Return our trees! A Metroid. <laughs> yeah. Give back our green forests. It's the spirit of early 2000s uh, Save the Rainforest campaign. Metroid wants trees. <laughs> Bring back the trees I must feed! None of these guys like Starkey. They all go exclusively for him, pretty much. <laughs> what is this, an illegal Yu-Gi-Oh move? What is this? The first season of Yu-Gi-Oh? Where fucking Yu-Gi takes a turn? And then fucking monologues for a while until fucking Weevil Underwood forgets it's supposed to be his turn and then takes another turn. <laughs> the first season is great. You're right, because they just they just make up the rules as they go along. Because everyone was clearly drunk. Screw the rules, I have money. Screw the rules, I have green hair. <laughs> Good old Kaiba. <clears throat> Man. That's another game I gotta do a playthrough of at some point. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! The False Bound Kingdom on the GameCube. Kaiba will send you to the Shadow Realm.
You're like, he doesn't even have a Millennium item. But he'll just use his vast wealth to make you disappear. It's the same difference. Yu-Gi-Oh! War of the Roses. That game is ridiculously hard. Except, uh, unless you play a water deck. Where you're like, water's my strength! And you just... All of your cards spread water out everywhere. So that you always have the advantage. second he's got the blue eyes white dragon go yeah he does and uh in the gamecube game i was talking about i like playing as kaiba because Yeah, these crystals just don't... I mean, they kind of light up, but they don't light up in a way. Yeah. Just... Yeah. Hmm. I'm just going to go with my earlier, uh, should have the order memorized. I haven't beaten Chrono Cross in years. <laughs> I'm just going to go with my original thought that there's an area up ahead that has a much more clear visual indication of it. I have a physical copy of it that I'm playing on the PS3 right now. But if worse comes to worse, I'll just... Uh, I'll just Google the combination. If that was supposed to be the place where you get the color combination, it's way too subtle. And I remember it being more overt. Do you have three different copies of Final Fantasy VIII? What the fuck? Is one of them at least the Black Label Edition? Okay. Got it as a secret Santa gift a couple of years back. Right on. Secret gift. Fuck yeah, Sefer. <laughs> One of my favorite things about Sephir 
is that in Final Fantasy VIII, he tells you that he has like a romantic dream of being someone's like knight. And then uh, the way they translated that over to his character in Kingdom Hearts 2 is that when he does one of his attacks, he yells, isn't this romantic? Yeah, that's in uh, Kingdom Hearts 2. When you're fighting Sephir during the struggle battles, one of his special moves is he like flips into the air and then dashes at you. And when he does that, he says, isn't this romantic? And he flies at you. Sounds like they got his character spot on King of Hearts 2. Yeah. <laughs> and that's still better, uh... That's still better than what they did to my man Setzer in Kingdom Hearts 2. Where they took, like, a free-flying, like, flying by the seat of his pants gambler man and turned him into, like, kind of a... a slightly slimy kind of con artist who wears, like, a shirt that his grandma knitted for him. Or, uh, yeah, that his grandma made for him. Yeah, that was one thing that uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 was missing the most. Was just the Final Fantasy stuff in it. Because as soon as you realize that there's no Final Fantasy characters in that game, you're like, oh, that means we don't keep the tradition of having a Sephiroth fight in all the numbered Kingdom Hearts games. Yeah, he did look kind of like one of the weapons from, uh, 7. From FF7. I think it'd be like, he'd be Onyx weapon, I guess. <laughs> Do you know that apparently uh, Ruby and Emerald weapon were only uh, bosses they added into the international version of FF7. Did I read your message about Black Ears in the Sui Code 1 manual? I did. And that actually makes a whole lot of sense. How it was a translation mistake. I remembered that that always upset me. That is frustrating. Because I spent so long looking for Black Ears when I first played that game. 
only to find that he just literally doesn't. It's, it's not the. Not, <laughs> that a character named Black Ears just doesn't exist in that game. <laughs> I wonder, I have the... Oh, I do have the game, uh... A disc copy of Sui Code, and I wonder if it still has this instruction manual like it. It looks like Starman from Earthbound. Which just attacked your mic. Oh, I set my controller on my desk as it started to vibrate. <laughs> That's what made that sound. <laughs> Troller Rumble is the future. Man, I was young enough to uh, remember how mind blowing it was when I played Metal Gear Solid and fucking Psycho Mantis moved my controller on the floor with the power of his mind alone, and I'm like, ah! A dedicated programmer just for the controller vibration. Right on. Well, he did his job well. <laughs> I was gonna play Metal Gear Solid 1 over Christmas, but then I was just exhausted, so I just didn't do it. But the original PS1 version of Metal Gear Solid 1 is my favorite in the entire series. Yeah, no, it's it's a short game, but it's always been a fun one. <laughs> Wait, this took like 40 hours the first time. It feels like that with some of the cutscenes. Starkey! What's funny about that game, though, is that, like, a number of actors went under pseudonyms in that game. Like, uh, Cam Clark, Cam Clark went under the name, like, James Flinders or something like that. Dead. Be like pearl weapon. <laughs> Ooh, 
But yeah, if you like just skip through all the cutscenes and just only go for gameplay, the yeah, Metal Gear Solid is like only about a two or three hour game. <laughs> I have heard rumors about that. I follow David Hayter on Twitter, and people keep, uh... Like... Tweeting at him. And he's like, if you want me to be Snake again, make your voices heard. Because he's... He's always down to be Snake again. I I love the idea of a Metal Gear Solid remake, but I don't love the idea of it of any games being made by Konami pretty much anymore, pretty much honestly. They've just Modern day Konami has burned me enough times that I just don't care. <laughs> so I'm happy at the prospect, but also very jaded at the idea of Konami helming a Metal Gear Solid remake. Maybe if they p published it while letting someone like Blue Point or something like that do it, then I would feel more okay with it. But if it's like straight up first party Konami doing it, I have no faith in it whatsoever. Disrespecting the origins of life, Mother C suffers. You must pay the price. Whoop. Fear me, I am Water Centaur, Aquatar. No, come on, the fucking goddamn it! <laughs> and now he's gonna make himself more nimble. Son of a bitch. <laughs> eh. There. The fuck your blue field. They stun magma bomb. Yeah. I <laughs> like that. <laughs> And again, they only go for Starkey. <laughs> they all hate Starkey. They know. They know. They know I be, may be the main character. And that Grobik may be an overwhelming powerhouse. But when the chips are down, Starkey always brings us home. Dap you. Fucking Let's hit him with our proton cannon arm. Yeah. 
<clears throat> Deluge. Uh, this might kill Grobic. No, he's okay. This one will kill Grobic, though. Blue field, huh? Oh. No, I don't think you get to capitalize on that. Here we go. Yellow, red, green. Yellow, red, green, blue. Black, white. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Go out and save one more time. This should play a list of Konami games. I mean, I'll play some old-school Konami games, sure. I'll even play some of the bad, like, newer ones. I should play the games that they get more and more depressing as you get closer to 2020. And end it with PT. Alright. Uh, I'll be right back in a second. I'm gonna get something to drink real quick. Alright, I'm back, and I just realized that the air purifier next to me has been on this whole time. So, I've probably sounded slightly like I'm in a wind tunnel. Alright.
Ush. Yeah, here we are. Okay. Stay. Arg. Help. Stop it. Ew. Welcome, humans. Those who know the torment and joy of creation know also the pleasure and pain of destruction. Therefore, all that pass through here must be prepared to share the burden that I carry. Oh, hey, kid. She's important to the story, so <laughs> she's just... Here now. <laughs> so this is the true frozen flame. Struth. Whatever that means. Hold on, don't touch it. Is everyone okay? Bugger you. Us humans ain't gonna let you have your way any longer. Come on, show your bloody self. Oh, here we go. Turn this up a bit more. In order to survive all living things in this world. Fight desperately and devour those they defeat. Must one kill other living things in order to survive? Going to kill Magmos. <laughs> one must destroy another world in order to allow one's own world to continue. The wounded, in turn, wound and torment those weaker than they themselves are. There are only the killers and the killed, the sinners who are judged, and the victims that do the judging. What meaning is there to such a world? Whether there's meaning to our lives or not, we still go on living, you know. Got no right to deny that. I shall cleanse this pu blue planet of you filthy humans once and for all. Here we go. The Devourer of Time. John Lavos demands a battle. Well, John Lavos will get a battle.
This would be far more threatening if it had an actual body. It didn't just look like a worm with a cool face. <laughs> eh, perhaps. I believe it actually transforms at some point. If I remember right. Rocket fest. Now he's going to change element. Now he's yellow element. He's yellow. Come on, we moved beyond just dropping a hunk of earth on somebody's head a long time ago. That's a cool animation. Glad I saw most of it. <laughs> I see what you're doing. That's sneaky game. He's using magic attacks in the order of the proper color sequence. Next time he attacks, he'll probably use blue, black, and white. Maybe. Changing elements again. What's up, baby? Yeah. <laughs> Save that for when he's black element. Come on, Starkey. Hit him! Hit him! Oh, no. Now he's... Red. Green. And then he'll use... Blue. Use like Aqua Ball or something after this. Ice Lance. Okay. Get him, Starkey. Yes. 
Now give him the aqua beam, since you only hit him once. Alright, 36 damage, so that'll have to do. Ooh! Time Devourer. Okay, now he's Green Element. And with my shoulder-mounted Proton Cannon. Earthquake. Love it. Robic dishes out disgusting damage. Yes, he does. Robic is a fucking monster. <laughs> and it's amazing. Bastard. Redfield. Unfortunately, it doesn't summon Chris to fucking punch a boulder at the dragon. so dumb. His magic. No, it's just the really low level magic in general. Magma Bomb doesn't do anything for anybody anymore. Now we're going to black.
Now, now it's time for Surge and Starkey to start hitting him with the good stuff. Don't miss. Yeah. Oh, I already hit him with Starstruck. Damn it. It's a little bit of a waste then. I'm just gonna have you heal then. Surge and Starkey need gimmicks. Grobic just wants to kill. <laughs> Slash. Oh, fuck. Are we going back home to the white dimension? Big attack again. Ultra Nova. Ooh. Rubik might be dead. No, he's still alive. Hurting, but he's still alive. What an amazing attack animation. Rubik has the flu. Ooh. 
purify. Oh, on himself. Sounds like someone really soft spoken stubbed their toe. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, no victory fanfare. Hearing of hope. Now I shall truly awaken again. This too is destiny. Woo! Hey, it's me, Balthazar. That thing, the Dragon God, is only a, a quasi-existence. A temporary form that the real Dragon God uses in order to appear within this dimension. The actual Dragon God was consumed long ago in the distant past. Integrated by the entity known as Lavos in a time on the other side of the dimensional darkness. The frozen flame is a splinter from the extraterrestrial being Lavos. The one who connects with the frozen flame in effect links with Lavos itself. As the mediator between Lavos and living things, that one will gain extraordinary powers. By binding with the new seed of destruction, the devourer of time. What in blazes is a devourer of time? Kid, that's what we just fought. Now go to the place where time became divided and weed the threads of time together again, Chrono Trigger. The Devourer of Time is a new life form, born out of the fusion of a life form from this planet with Lavos, who nests on the far side of the dimensional void. In the far off future, when the fusion becomes complete, it will awaken. But, fucking Tim Curry evil clown? Then the Devourer of Time will begin to consume all space time continua despair and hatred to return all things to nothingness. That is what it desires. Suddenly the Chrono Trigger universe uh, is co-opted by Stephen King. Here, take this with you. Surge received the time egg. That time egg will enable you to travel beyond space-time. The world is in your hands. Go, release the life that is imprisoned. Gotcha, man. Whoosh, I'm a hologram! Oh, I didn't get that treasure chest there. Oh, son of a bitch. Right, B, what in bloody hell's happening? This place is going to crumble to pieces.
turn this back down a little bit. Yeah, that should be good. What was the name of the game with the kid for the SNES? Nautical Dreamers? No, it was called Radical Dreamers. And it was a... Uh, basically a text adventure game. Which is probably why most more people don't actually talk about it. So that's Terra Tower's true final form. In the end, we're all the same. Everyone dreams of being greater and more powerful. Yes, because this too is the world of Dragon Ball Z, where nobody has ever f reached their actual final form yet. Let's not raise this beat the power of time. Once we wipe the devourer of time off the face of this planet, it's all over. Everything will go back to normal again. Wrong. Things won't ever go back to the way they were. Destiny. Fate is dead. From now on, us humans have to choose our own way in life. Us have to take responsibility for the choices we do make. Something's got to be done about the way we go on hurting and killing one another. Got to settle our differences once and for all. So what's really important is what we do now. The issue ain't whether we defeat that bastard or not. I'm afraid that depending on how we go about it, we could lose out on gaining something real precious. Hint, hint. Wink, wink. Hey, Surge, if we don't do things right, we won't get the real ending. Wink! But the issue is the way we fight. Where on earth is the real devourer of time? I am getting a real ending. Kids just being... Really not subtle about uh, letting me know that there's a right way to do things. My guess is the key to finding it lies at that beach where this whole thing started. This is probably where this whole thing will end. Oh, Grobix still got the flu. Sorry, Grobic. There you go, man. Alright. So... Everybody needs... It doesn't matter that it's underpowered. Oh wait, no. One, two, three, four. Okay. Need a black element. <laughs> Gravity blow.
Okay. Go ahead and save. Then let's go do this. I have to be on the other side? Yeah, okay. Now we're on the right side. Because I see ghost children again. So you finally made it, Serge. When did this sorry tale all begin? Was it ten years ago when you almost drowned here? Or was it fourteen years ago when you were wounded by that panther demon that attacked you? Resulting in you being carried to Chronopolis, where you came into contact with fate in the frozen flame. Or perhaps it was even 2400 years in the future, when the time crash hurled Chronopolis back to prehistoric times. Or even it could have been 12,000 uh, BC, when an ancient magical kingdom met its end after trying to use Lavos. Each is close to being correct, and yet at the same time so far from the right answer. The true beginning was during the destruction of the ancient kingdom of Zeal. But that was one of the options you said, and you said that none of them were correct. But in reality, one of them was correct. Oh, good morning. Hey, you clued in at the right time, man. We're about to finish this game. As the palace collapsed around her, Princess Shala was sucked into a dimensional vortex along with the Lavos Mammon machine. Shala and Lavos became unified into one even more powerful entity that would evolve into the Devourer of Time. You're trying to find a way to play it? Uh... If you've got, like, a... A PS3, you can, uh, buy it, like, a digital classics edition version of it. Uh, I've got an actual physical copy that I'm playing on my PS3. Also, you can probably download it if you have a Vita. Otherwise, it's a little bit more complicated. Chala and Lavos became... I have a copy of myself, but my PS3 isn't backwards compatible. Wait. No, because... Pretty much, uh, unless... 
something happened with later PS3s, they should all be at least backwards compatible with PS1 games. Just only the really, really early editions can do PS2 games. But pretty much all PS3s, as far as I knew, could do PS1s. Oh no, Chrono Cross is a PS1 game. <laughs> hey, you're good, man. Filled with the hatred and sadness of Lavos, half of Shala's mind became set on destroying all of existence. Yet at the same time, the other half of her mind desired... A PS2 plays PS1 in two games, but my PS3 won't play anything. Huh. I mean, if you've got a PS2, that solves your problem too. You just need to get yourself a physical copy of it then. But if you've got PS3 and access to the PlayStation Network Store... You can actually buy a digital copy of the game under their PlayStation Classics collection. Yet at the same time, the other half of her mind decided to save the universe and be rescued herself. <laughs> yeah, you're alright, man. Yeah, there's ways to do it. It's a really fun game. It's, uh, I like just about anything like PlayStation 1 RPG wise. Those are some of my favorite games of all time, quite honestly. Ashala fell through the time gate in this condition. She heard your crying echoing through time. That is when her story and yours began to intertwine. Also when the past and the future began to intersect and when the world became divided into two. Planning on streaming Lunar 2 Eternal Blue. I fucking love Lunar 2. I have not played through that game in a million years, but it is so good. <laughs> I actually have the complete, like, box edition with all the stuff in it sitting on top of uh, my shelf in my room, in my living room. Yeah, I got Lunar 1 in its complete box edition, too. <laughs> right on, man. <laughs> it is also... It's about pretty much the only games I've ever actually gone way out of my way to actually get complete editions of. Otherwise, for the most part, as long as I can just get the discs to play it off of, I'm happy. There's also when the past and the future began to intersect and when the world became divided in two. Ever heard of Jade Cocoon? I have heard of Jade Cocoon. That's kind of like the the PlayStation uh, almost kind of Pokemon game. But I've never played it. <laughs> the future began to intersect and when the world became divided in two. Led by the pitiful crying, the young surge made the panther demon's poison take ho made as the panther's demon's poison took hold of him. Princess Shala traveled ten thousand years in time to try and make contact with this dimension. This caused a raging magnetic storm that resulted in fate's system malfunction, which led to surge to the frozen flame. Yes, Surge, the sound of your crying touched the heart of Princess Shala. Before the destructive mindset could become dominant, she cloned herself and sent her copy into this dimension. Shala left her baby daughter clone with her ancient pendant, possessing magical powers. Yes, because Kid is apparently a clone of Shala. This was to safeguard her daughter clone in life and death situations. That's why, in life or death situations, kid just disappears and respawns later. <laughs> the pendant would rewind time a little, sending her daughter clone into a safer point in the immediate past. Either way, nothing changes who you become. Who you've become, you're still my precious little sister, kid. 
And now, about Project Kid, the time control project Balthazar planned out. The whole project existed to lead you to this one special point in time. The founding of Chronopolis, the time crash, and the battle between fate and the dragon gods. It was all coordinated so that you would get your hands on the Chrono Cross and come to this place. Of course, Kid was not to know anything about this whole plan until later, when all this will finish. Further in the future, Kid is meant to travel back ten, th or ten years in time from now to save Surge from drowning. And then Kid was also meant to call Surge into the other world as he spoke with Lena here on Opasa Beach. You're our last hope, our final chance. Only you who came in contact with Shala and Kid, Shala's clone daughter, can do it. In the darkness that exists on the other side of time, Shala has been integrated with the devourer of time. Please, Surge, release Princess Shala from the binds of that monster in her own hatred. Show us, the life forms that exist on this planet, what our new future will be. Okay, what do you have to say, Marl? A new species is about to be born on this planet, an alien life form even more evolved than the old Lavos. At the darkness beyond time, the weakened Shala came under the influence of Lavos. The two became one entity. Now it's up to you, the one who the frozen flame has chosen as its arbiter. You alone can decide how the new Lavos, which has encaged Shala within it, will evolve from here. Your actions will determine whether in the future all time is devoured by Lavos, sending the worth into world into everlasting death? Balthazar foresaw this was going to happen in his world in the year 2300. And then he was predetermined, or determined to prevent it from happening no matter what it took. The Chrono Cross. It alone can combine the sounds of the planet that the six types of elements produce. The melody and harmony that brim within all life forms. Use the song of life to heal her enmity and suffering. We entreat you, Surge. Please save Shala. Hey, Chrono. Where even angels lose their way. This isn't the real Chrono because he's not mute. <laughs> Ten years ago, you died at this very spot. There's no mistake you drowned. The truth is, this world in which you are still alive is the irregularity. This is the false reality. Ten years ago, it was Lynx who tried to kill you at this beach. After Prometheus broke the link between fate and the flame... Fate tried to eliminate any obstacle that stood in its way. In the meantime, the six dragons had sent Harley, Harl forth to try and gain possession of the flame. Harl made contact with Fate's biological incarnation, Lynx, who tricked him into temporarily joining forces. The elimination of the Prometheus Circuit's lock on the frozen flame was everyone's top priority. Lynx and Harl abducted Luca, who alone could release the Prometheus lock that guarded the flame. But the whole attempt only ended in failure. Then, they just waited for you to appear instead. You see, fate calculated that you would one day cross the dimensions and try to make contact with the flame. <clears throat> I forgot about this huge exposition dump right at the end of the game. I don't know how to break this to you, but Lynx was actually your father, Wazuki. Drawing closer to the flame caused him to become unstable, and the image of you dying in terror changed him completely. Finally, after having his psyche totally eroded, he lost his soul and was easily integrated by fate. Fate turned Waizuki into a biological interface, modeling him after your worst fear at the time, a panther. Fate was like, he fears cats. You now will become the cat man. <laughs> Although Wazuki managed to escape from Chronopolis with you, he later completely succumbed to fate. Humans are such fragile, disjointed, imperfect things. Love and hate, life and death. Perhaps even fate itself dreamed of using the flame to someday reincarnate itself into a new species. It's quite sad, really. It's like when you gaze into the flame, the flame gazes back into you. Some Stephen King levels of dumb. Okay, everybody. Let's, uh. No beginning and no end. To the darkness of time!
This must be the final gate to the darkness of time. We finally come this far. Starkey will fight to the end alongside you, Surge. What else can Grovic do but destroy? <laughs> Okay, first things first, we have to build up, oh you're just starting out with that? Well shoot. So our goal in the first part here is that we need to build up our uh, element levels. Come the fuck on. Okay. Is it after it uses Omega? Green, blue. Black. Shit.
Okay. Green. And white. Okay. If I remember right, once you get it to this point where you've done all six elements, uh, I don't think he attacks again as he waits for you to do this the chrono cross Feels so good, man.
<laughs> the search picture of that with the rolled up newspaper. Having played through Chrono Trigger like several times, have the criticisms you want about Chrono Cross, that's fine. But like, having this kind of un- this final loose fr thread be tied up like this is so satisfying and it's part of why I love this game. I've been waiting an eternity just for this very moment. Cross was a wild departure from Trigger. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're not wrong. They're in the same series, but they're drastically different games. Which is why this, there's a lot of, like... You either really love or you really hate Chrono Cross. There doesn't seem to be much of a cross-section. Meaninglessly hurting one another, dis disappearing life forms. The words that became deleted, the thoughts that became buried, the pool of cells that slowly evaporate, the echoes of consciousness that slowly fade. Love to hate, hate to love. Why are we born? Why are we die? Why are we die? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Why do we die? Evolution? The survival of the fittest? What is there to be achieved from harming one another, killing one another? <laughs> Why are we die? Okay. Still need a second to compose myself. The eggs that we call planets and the innumerable spermatozoa which gather around these that we call life forms. When one of these countless seeds inseminates a planet, a new universe is born. But until that occurs, hundreds of millions of years will pass, and the innumerable life forms will be born and then die. That is the be all and end all. Everything exists for that one moment. Also, that the universe can evolve into the next dimension. Does that make us all just pawns? Are each of our short lives nothing but a cheap sacrifice so that the one chosen life form can be born? No, that is not the case. Each and every one of us has a chance of becoming that one chosen life form which inseminates a planet. Yes, it could be you. I don't want to inseminate a planet, though. There you go, Uziness. Uh, don't worry, I won't. Genes and environment. Each of us tries to do his best under the limited conditions that we are dealt. Each life form that attempts to eke out a decent life for itself forms a link in that link in that golden chain that leads us to the creation of a new universe. If one link is missing, there will be no future. There is no such thing as a useless life form. No such thing as a pawn. Every single thing in this whole, in the whole of nature, is perhaps just dreaming a dream of life. All of them are also perhaps nothing more than a dream dreamt by the planet before it is born. Oh, but yes, eventually all dreams will return to Zervan, to the Sea of Dreams. Surge, don't go yet, Surge. It's alright. Everything's alright now. 
Time, which has been divided, will be unified again now. The time for farewells has come. You will lose all memory of this whole adventure and return to your own time. But this time, you will be able to live your own life. You are going home, Serge? Starkey, I'm going home, too. My comrades are here to pick me up. Starkey learned a lot from humans. You are welcome, Serge. Something new Grobic can do that will be interesting. We alone do not have the power to heal the world's woes or to solve all of its mysteries. And yet, even then... It was bloody good knowing you, mate. Thanks for being born, you, Surge. Guess now's the time to say see you later, mate, but I'll find you. Sometime, somewhere, I'm bloody sure of it. No matter the time period, no matter the world you live in, I'll find you. I'm sure. I am sure I will find you. Surge. Surge. Hey, Surge. You're all right? What's the matter? Don't scare me like that. You just passed out all of a sudden. Hmm? What? Terra Tower? Fate? What are you talking about? We just got here. Get some Komodo Dragon Scales for me, don't you remember? No. <laughs> you sound confused. Come on, Serge, get with the program. Serge is like, Where's my friends? Starkey and Grobik. The... He would sound like a psychopath, telling people about how he journeyed around with a little moon man and a robot man and defeated a dragon god to rescue a small blonde girl displaced from time and space. Come on, Serge, get with the program. Our summer's just started. Thus the curtain closes on another tale, and eternity has passed. Fleeting dreams fade into the distance. All that left is all that is left now is me and my memories. But I'm sure we'll meet again. Someday you and I, another place, another time. It's just that we might not realize that you are you and that I am me. So I realize I'm doing this voice, and I think Kid is supposed to be the narrator. Let us open the door to the great unknown, come across another reality, and live another today. Even when the story has been told, life goes on. Until we meet again, take care of yourself, my friend. Forever yours, Shala Kid Zeal. Oh, you cowards, you don't even show Megas' face in that picture. They know they fucked up. They did. They really did. Oh. And that was Chrono Cross. How many different ways? 
if I keep talking about the fact that I absolutely fucking adore this game. It's got amazing music. A pretty good story that, you know, takes kind of a weird loony turn towards the end. But that's just JRPGs in general. The CG cutscenes for like 1999 are like fucking primo for the uh, PS1. Just another reason that I adore, like, the PS1 RPG library. This song is beautiful too, even if it is just another reason for fucking Square to uh, claim my stream or my uh, VOD on YouTube. But that's okay, because I don't monetize those videos anyway, so they get nothing from it. PS1 had some amazing things because new technology and psychopaths are working on them. <laughs> I mean, if that's why you, how you want to describe it. I get it, though. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm glad. If they were crazy people, I'm glad they were crazy. <laughs> scenes for a lot of these games. And hearing stories about how one man found a random fix for weird small things. Huh. That is crazy. Testing and debugging squirts. <laughs> like, I know some of the background on this game in particular. Just mostly the Magus was supposed to play a larger role, and then about halfway through, they dropped most of the references to him being Guile. And the fact that there was supposed to be a Chrono Break sequel for the PS2, but then the two people who were making it kind of fell out, and so it'll never happen. They dropped him because they added too many characters. Yeah. Otherwise, they would have had to uh, increase your party size to accommodate having more characters. I will find you, even if I have to search the world over sometime, somewhere, I'm sure. That's a little bit creepy, kid.
I mean, it was nice the first time, but then you kept saying it, and now it makes you sound like a stalker. She's gonna marry the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. All right. Well, there we go. Happy New Year's, y'all. Hope you had fun watching. When I come back tomorrow, probably, probably do some more Fire Emblem 1. And then I'll start working, uh, figuring out another project to do. It's fun, man. Yeah, it was fun. I'm glad you joined me for the uh, finale. <laughs> Alright. Well, Happy New Year's, and you all have a good night. Your head out? Alright, take it easy. See ya.